I recently had an email and a follow-up conversation with Terry Jaden, an AccuSlice customer from Arizona, and he had an idea of an interchangeable, quick-change, sacrificial fence for the AccuSlice carriage. Instead of using our conventional carriage and uh, sacrificial fence, which mounted to the carriage with screws, uh, Terry actually took his, in his case, Baltic perch plywood, uh, I normally use MDF, but he actually inserted it in screw inserts into the sacrificial fence. And then he drilled out his holes in the sacrificial fence to accommodate quarter inch bolts. And then he could bolt this sacrificial fence to the carriage with quarter inch hex head bolts. I think this is an outstanding idea and I definitely have developed applications for this in my shop already. And what I've been able to do is I've been made some uh, smaller sacrificial fence because I don't need, don't need these big ones all the time just to accommodate a single segment of ring. Uh, in this case, instead of using double-sided tape to glue the, the uh, segment uh, ring to my sacrificial fence, I actually glued it. Uh, these are inexpensive, they're cheap, uh, and when it wears down, if I cut down to the end, I can always stand it flat and keep reusing it. But uh, this is an e excellent idea for maximizing the use of your wood. In the past, I would have mounted my segmented ring to my carriage and then slice it off. Even though I don't need it one ring for a particular project, I cut the whole thing off and put all my slivers, my small segments on the shelf for a future project. When that project came up a month or two months in the future, those rings may have gotten broken or damaged or fallen on the floor or may have just cracked and they're unusable. With this case, if I need a single ring for a project, I mount it on here, cut off my one ring, when I'm done, just take this off the uh, carriage, put it on a shelf, and wait for the next project. So it's a much more economical use of my wood for all my projects. And I made about a half a dozen of these so far, and I mounted my various uh, segmented discs to the blocks. Uh, and I'll just save these on a shelf until I need them for a particular project. This is nice because many of my projects I use like a, a piece of uh, maple and then catalogs and maybe a maple, like alternating rings and different sizes, different thicknesses and now I can just cut them off as I need them for a project. In Terry's original design he uh, drilled out the carriage to accommodate quarter inch hex head bolts and then used hex head bolts to mount his sacrificial fence to the carriage. I did things a little bit different in my case instead of using quarter inch bolts I'm using these number 1032 uh, thumb screws. And so I've drilled holes and mounted uh, my inserts for the number 1032 screws. I did enlarge my holes a little bit to give me a little bit of slop in case my alignment's off by a few thousandths. And, uh, and now in my case, I just mount my carriage, mount my second push fence to the carriage, and then use these thumb screws to attach it to the sacrificial fence to the carriage. And then when I've done my project, I just take it off and, and just put it on the shelf for a future project. It enables me to work on a project and cut a bunch of different slivers or a bunch of different rings just by switching back and forth and not tie up the system with the whole board that I might have to run off you know, a dozen you know, segment <coughs> rings for future projects. I just use the wood as I need it. I've cut a bunch of these uh, pieces of MDF boards, which are four inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And these are to be used to mount my segmented rings that I'll eventually slice off on the AccuSlice system. Uh, this board is going to be mounted with just two of the screw positions on the carriage on the AccuSlice system. And I've marked the two holes. The bottom hole is one and three quarter inches from the bottom of the plate and from the bottom hole to the top hole is another two and a half inches and I have put the hole right in the center of the board. I've used a center point to mark the two center points so I can accurately line my drill bit. I'm using a 25 64 inch brad point drill bit and I like to locate the position of the hole before I start my drill and I'll go ahead and drill these two holes.
And there's my plate ready to screw in the two inserts. And I'm using inserts that have an inside diameter of uh, for number 10, 32 screws. This is a little bit larger board uh, for some larger segmented rings or even some boards. This particular board is uh, 7 inches long by 6 inches high and it spans two sets of mounting holes on the uh, carriage on the AccuSlice system. So I'll go ahead and drill these four holes before I put the inserts inside them. And there's our board already to attach our inserts. Here's another board I made previously with uh, six inserts. It spans the entire width of the carriage on the AccuSlice system and I've already inserted the inserts in here so this board is all ready to mount on the carriage on the AccuSlice system. I find the best way to insert these uh, screw inserts into the uh, boards is to actually use the drill press as a guide. And I made a board previously trying to use a hand drill and the, the, the inserts just didn't go in straight. They weren't accurate enough. In fact, they were out so much that the screws weren't even aligned on the AccuSlice carriage. So I used the drill press as a guide. And actually to drive the inserts, I'm using a special tool you can buy. It's around $10, uh, which locks into the insert and then enables you to drive it into the hole that we've pre-drilled. So I just attach this to my drill press. And then the insert locks in those two tabs. And then you can press. I'm not turning the power in the drill press. I'm just using the drill press to get it perfectly straight. And what I'm doing is actually turning the board. Now, as the screw starts, it'll go into the hole and self-tap itself and be perfectly straight. So there'll be no alignment issues on the AccuSlice system. Let me repeat that for the second one. And I took that a little bit below the surface. Don't want it sticking above the surface, so it has to be below the surface of the board. So again, repeat the same process. done. I'll lightly sand the surface in case there's a bump here where the threads might have you know, expanded the wood a little bit. But that's all ready to go on the AccuSlice carriage now and attach my boards to these disposable, interchangeable AccuSlice uh, sacrificial fences. Okay, we're all set now to attach our newly designed interchangeable sacrificial fences to our AccuSlice carriage using these uh, insert uh, screws. And in Terry's original design, he used some quarter inch bolts to attach his sacrificial fence to the carriage. And he, he pre drilled these holes to a little bit larger diameter to fit the quarter inch screws. Uh, I've kind of done the same thing. I've enlarged my holes a little bit here. Uh, they're almost a quarter inch in diameter. But instead of using screws uh, with hex heads on the top or even slotted screws, I'm using these thumb screws. I like these much better because I, I don't need to use uh, tools to take them off and on. Instead of using quarter inch bolts though, these are number 1032 screws. So a little bit smaller and I have a little bit of play here to allow for, you know, something might be out of alignment just this slight. So what I do here is I, I insert my screw. Just by hand I can just tighten it up. Insert the second one, do the same thing. And they hold the board quite snugly and quite nicely, you know, all ready to be used. Here's two boards that I already mounted. And in the past, I would have used double sided tape to attach these rings to my sacrificial fence. And in that case, I would have because I was trying, I used my sacrificial fence for other things, I took my board and I just cut off all the pieces. Even though I didn't need them, I cut it all up. And in the future, if I needed these for a project, you know, I had them, but maybe they're the wrong size, or maybe they fell on the floor and cracked, 
it broke. So now, if I need a ring for a project, I just cut off my ring, put the board back on the shelf for the next project. It's particularly important to some of my solid rings because they make a lot of you know, alternating uh, catalogs, which is a dark wood and this maple, to give me contrasting rings. And I want different thicknesses. I'll, sometimes I want 50,000, sometimes I want 100,000 inch thick. So now I just cut off the ring I want, put the shelf board back on the shelf, and just save it for my next project. It's much more efficient use of my wood. Uh, and I have a bunch of these boards. I'll just be storing these on the shelf and then using the rings as I need them for a project. I want to thank Terry for his idea. Uh, we always appreciate ideas from our customers. If you have an idea, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, there's always newer ways to do things. There's better ways to do things. I can't think of everything. And I appreciate all your feedback. And if you have a good idea, I'd like to try it in my shop. And if I think it's beneficial, has um, use for other customers, I'll put it in a future video uh, as another AccuSlice tip and pass it on to our other AccuSlice customers. Again, thank you, Terry, and we appreciate all your feedback.